What's up, Crypto Crew? Welcome back. Or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto oceans. If you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, today we're about to go beyond crescendo with Casper Core developer Michael Sutton. But before we go in, always remember to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Your crypto investments are best kept practicing self custody. And for that, in our opinion, the Tangem Wallet is your best option. Plug and play, easy to use, and the most affordable cold storage. You can get 10% off using code CryptoCrew with the link in the description box below. As always, thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance, and may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. Who wants to wait 42 seconds to watch something download instead of two seconds? Nobody. Shout out to Ankit and the XXIM podcast, where recently Michael Sutton pulled back the curtain on what's next for Caspa beyond the crescendo. Listen in, Crypto Crew. Summarizing oh, them all into one package and saying, let's put this into crescendo. Right. I see. I see. So 14 is a summary of all. Like 14 has the, uh, the fact that we allow payloads. And that's Yeah, that is huge now for all the builders that are constantly talking about payloads here. Yeah. Everything you see now, um, Cassia is, is using payloads. Obviously, payload simplify KRC20. I don't know if they already implemented the simplification, yeah. but KRC20 had to do like a workaround yeah. in order to inject general data into the oh, transaction. Right, right, right. And then, and also for this layer two's coming up, right? So that sort of relies on payload as well. No other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously, it's like the main use. Yeah, exactly. Of yeah, because layer twos will have to sort of constantly looking for that, right? The payload. Yeah, they mostly follow the payloads that target yeah. them by some specific rule, by prefix or something. It's like L1 actually acting as the sequencer and the data availability yeah. layer. Yeah. But without the zero knowledge part, there's no settlement. You cannot like, it's only, it's one way communication yeah. in a sense. Like the L2 observes and, and gives its interpretation to the payload, but L1 has no idea uh, what this interpretation is, what it means on any state, and it cannot be proven to because there's no zero knowledge verification yet on L1. So it's the base without the without settlement. Without the settlement, yeah. yeah. It's the settlement part is separate, yeah. Settlement is critical yeah. because for a canonical bridge, for having CAS flow back and forth in a trustless way, you need zero knowledge. The main point was that if you have this very extreme event and, and someone is trying to force you to roll back, yeah. so in the case of with no zero knowledge, you, you only need to force the L2 community to roll back their interpretation and ignore some transaction maybe. And when there's a zero, no, there is a zero knowledge yeah. program you're committed to, yeah. you, you can't just you can't change, change the rules. rules. Yeah. yeah, so two kinds of storage, like the, the long-term persistent storage, yeah. which is essentially the UTXO right. set. So this on the you uh, on the keep na uh, keep 9, right? That's the part you had to resolve yeah. on keep 9. That's the more challenging yeah. one. And then keep 13 is is just being more explicit about the block size limit because we had this we have this mass uh, definition which also takes into account like sig uh, computational mm. costs. Like s signature verification has like increases the mass yeah. by a thousand and we wanted a unit to be focused on only the size like so how much does it cost to keep this transaction in the database and disk for the for a few days so that's why we created also the transient storage mass and we modeled it as like a few dimensions there's a few different limits so i say keep 13 is like it just made sure we know exactly to calculate how much disk you need in the worst case without influencing other other parts and uh, but keep nine is much more significant because it solves a much yeah. harder problem. Kind of uh, regulates how the UTXO set yeah. grows over time. Uh, the challenge is applying a local cost function to each transaction, yeah. such that the global dynamics have a bond. Well, I That's like the magic right, part, right? And not hurting UX of users of right. normal users. So how do you distinguish an attacker with an honest user? Uh, you don't necessarily distinguish, but you can identify patterns. And in that sense, Keep 10 is also related to Keep 9. Like Keep 10 became more general, introducing what we call introspectional yeah. codes to the script engine and covenant, and, and by that having some kind of covenant. But one of the main motivations for Keep 10 was actually what we call additive addresses, which was part of the solution what Keep 9 was trying to solve. It was saying, okay, Keep 9 is adding this cost function, but what happens if there's a an honest user who still wants to do a micro transaction, which might seem like dust. And so how do we I counter see, that? I so see. technically, crescendo was an engineering yeah. challenge besides the consensus Just changes. Like I'd say the, the most significant challenge maybe was uh, 
the peer, the real time peer to peer peer to peer traffic. When the DAG is forming alive, so the exchange of, yeah. of blocks uh, tightly, yeah. we minimizing the delay as much as possible, so the truck the structure is connected. Ah, that part like needed to be engineered so accurately that I, I've never been involved in something so delicate. Right. The correct lines of code here and there made the difference between a system which is always converging correctly and a system where some nodes just, just fall fly out or, or fall into yeah. infinite loops of catching up and stuff like that so and the main point i'd say why why was it significant moving from mm -hmm. one bps to 10 bps because the rtt time between two nodes far away nodes yeah. in the network can be 200 right. milliseconds or 300 milliseconds and block time being 100 milliseconds makes it all much more right. significant. That's the threshold uh, we passed uh, to the downside, which made uh, everything challenging, but also the, especially I'd say the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, real-time exchange. I see, I see. It was also slightly unknown. Like I remember people asking me, uh, Michael, is this actually going to work? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Can this work or, or are we trying to do the impossible? Yeah. Personally, I decided that Casper's next hard fork will have much more people carrying the weight. It's just more correct. It's the natural yep. progress. There's, there are going to be much more stakeholders yep. involved, L2s. So it's happening naturally, but yep. also it has to happen just, <laughs> I think people who are non-technical and non-engineers can appreciate it to some level, but not no. really. No. I'm trying to do my part in this. So besides answering technical questions all the times, so if I can, also, um, uh, doing the workshops, right. I, okay. I always like publish them on, on X and on discord and usually we do it in the discord okay. meeting chat. Right. So last workshop was broadcasted live on YouTube by someone and then the recording was available. Okay. Right away. Perfect. The most significant thing I'm working on right now is actually like, um, atomic composability okay. between zero knowledge, um, systems. We're still in the phase where it's not, there's no, it's about clarifying things now. Eventually things become right. simple and I, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen here too. Regarding DAG night, I'm, I'm more like in the phase of this planning, how to do this. I think there's a version we can aim to, which is, I call it B0 or DevNet version, which is, um, about taking the current algorithm and, and simplifying it, taking away all complicated parts or mm -hmm. unknown parts, but implementing the basic Dagnite idea uh, and structure so that we can build yep. on that. Um, and that's saying, okay, let's not get stuck. If there's an applied research question, say the paper has an algorithm, which there's no obvious efficient implementation for. It's understanding the basic component of the algorithm, implementing a first version, which avoids all complications. Um, and also applying like the broad code base of, uh, uh, consequences of this, of this change. Mostly it's a change about the ordering protocol, like a specific mo module where you're changing. Okay. You're saying, let's select the select parent, not by goals DAG, but, but by DAG night. That's like the main outcome of the ordering protocol. We're staying in the realm of chain based oh. DAG oh. ordering. We're just changing the chain selection rule. Very, <laughs> Very simple. simple. Of course. I think too. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that box itself is complicated but it's pretty much uh, let's say isolated and self-contained but there are usages of of ghost tag the blue blocks blue set the coloring for rewards there's all kinds of usages out of the ordering for the itself and those usages not necessarily Dagnite doesn't necessarily provide the same kind of semantics you're placing this box inside the code base but then there's a few usages you have to um make up for the second phase of the effort is about clarifying all the things you skipped at the initial mm. phase, implementing some one of the algorithms which is challenging in, in the best efficient way, etc. Et but there's also an effort to simplify the protocol and make sure the proof isn't broken, like it doesn't break. I think the current like protocol is complicated. It has like a few complexities which were introduced in order to, to streamline the proof. So there's also an effort around that mutual wall of the paper and the code, uh, which I'd say is the second phase. I'm aiming for a system where we can have others code and I, I, I'm, I'll be focused on, on, on uh, orchestrating and finalizing the paper along the way. That's what me and, and Jonathan will do that. That's more or less how I see yeah, Dagnite. So did you say a paper? So it'll be a new paper on Dagnite coming out? Because there's already a paper, right? A new version, maybe. There's actually a lot of internal versions <laughs> since the last public right. version. Yeah, so eventually those versions are okay. going to consolidate and we're going to publish them also.
Crypto Crew, it's always great to see what's going on under the hood of Casper. Shout out to Ankit and the XXIM podcast, gathering great insights from Michael Sutton. Shout out to him. Shout out to the Casper Dev team, as it seems Casper is just getting started. Since we are in August of 2025, at the moment we're just weeks away from Casplex Layer 2 launch on the main net, we will see Casper smart contracts by Sunday, August 31st. More to come in a video near you, Crypto Crew. There is no second best. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.